Here are some thoughts about the Rosary. This Lent, you may have been following the 40 Ways of Prayer posted on our Facebook. There are so many ways, but all of them are about the one essential reality, ways of praying that really help us to grow in that loving relationship with God that our hearts thirst for. The Rosary is simply one particular way. As you probably know, it was in the 12th century that St Dominic began to use prayer beads to help people grow in their faith. He travelled round as a preacher in the south of France, trying to help people discover God's love for them in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, at a time when false teaching of the Cathartists with their puritanical, unhealthy attitudes to life, were corrupting people's faith in God and the great mystery of the Incarnation, God becoming in Jesus one of us, fully human. Apparently, Dominic would preach for a while on the different mysteries in the life of Jesus, and then he would invite his listeners to move the beads through their fingers as they reflected on what he taught them. In this way, he could guide them through the Gospel. He passed this tradition on to his followers, the Dominican Friars, Order of Preachers, who still promote the Rosary today. Over the centuries that followed Dominic, the Rosary grew in popularity and the pattern of the beads gradually became the one we have today. In our lifetime, however, there's been one significant change. Pope John Paul II added to the traditional 15 mysteries of the Rosary, the joyful, sorrowful and glorious mysteries, the mysteries of light that recall the public life of Jesus, from his baptism to the institution of the Eucharist at the Last Supper. You don't need me to teach you ways of praying the Rosary, but I thought I could share with you just a few little insights that have come my way as I use this form of prayer and have learnt it from others in my turn. I've found that I don't stick to any set pattern, such as you find in prayer handbooks, which indicate which mysteries are to be pondered on certain weekdays. I have my favourite the mysteries of light. I don't always have my rosary beads on me, so my fingers become my beads quite often as I walk around or on a long journey. Quite recently I came across a lovely little book called Homely Love, Prayers and Reflections using the words of Julian of Norwich. In it were the words of Julian's tenth revelation when Christ showed her his wounded side and pierced heart. The words are, See how I loved you. Well, on our rosaries we have a crucifix, and I have to admit, I used to begin praying going straight into the first mysteries and the opening Our Father. But thanks to this book and my own love of the prayer we call the sign of the cross, I don't want to hurry. It just sums up everything, doesn't it? God loved the world so much, that much. I think I used to kiss the crucifix at the end of saying the rosary in a kind of habitual way, but now it's come to be so important. See how I love you. I've had times of coping with severe pain, sometimes physical, Sometimes the pain of a great sorrow, it happens to us all. I have always found the sorrowful mysteries help me through. Also, just holding the beads can be a kind of therapy for me, as I know it is for others. I don't think you're obliged to pray the whole rosary. Sometimes just a particular mystery is enough. I've become a bit creative about the glorious mysteries. I have my own focus points for each of the five decades. I begin with the risen Jesus meeting his mother. 
Then he meets Mary and calls her by name. Then he meets his friends locked for fear in the upper room. Then he's walking to Emmaus with the two disciples. And finally, he's having breakfast by the lake and asking Peter if he loves him. You might like to try your own versions. I expect each of us prays the rosary in a different way. I move from mystery to mystery, following the pattern of the beads. But I don't focus on each individual prayer. I just seem to hold in my heart the particular mystery in the life of Jesus and somehow be present to it, present to him. It's not easy to describe this to you. At the coming of the Holy Spirit in the glorious mysteries, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to come now on me and on our world. At the final glorious mystery, I want to be there with my mum and dad and my sisters and all my beloved family who've gone to God and with the saints and the angels whom I love. In a strange way, the words of the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, and the repeated Hail Mary prayers become like some beautiful background music to this. But finally, just a word about those precious prayers. First, the Our Father, the foundation prayer of our Christian faith. At the beginning of this, Jesus' own prayer pattern, we are, as it were, looking up, raising up our hearts and our hands in awe, gazing with him towards the Father, from whom all love and goodness come. Then, in the second half of that prayer, it is as if our hands are lowered and opened out now, empty, needy, but trustfully, as we ask for what we need. The Hail Mary we never tire of saying, it is so beautiful. All the opening phrases are directly from the Gospel. We echo the angel's greeting and later Elizabeth's greeting to Mary. We are drawn into the most precious moment in the history of creation in this prayer because it surrounds the moment when Mary said her yes to God and God became one of us. The Lord is with thee is actually a refrain throughout the Old Testament. It comes again and again in the story of salvation, God's unshakable promise, God's covenant promise to be with us always. And through Mary's yes, God is with us definitively in Jesus. So no wonder in the second half of that prayer, we ask her to pray for us, pray with us, stay with us, and comfortingly now as well as at the mysterious hour of our death. Amen.